Welcome back, my name is Benji. Today I want to welcome you to a bit of a different video. And as the title and thumbnail suggests, yes, there is a new cycling game in town and I'd like to dive into it. The Cyclist Tactics is a turn-based strategy game in which you lead a small team of professional cyclists from humble beginnings to competing in the toughest and most prestigious cycling events in the world. The game's focus is on the highly tactical races, with all stages being procedurally generated at the start of each season, making them unique. Despite its board game-like look, there are no dice rolling or RNG mechanics. Winning comes about when superior decision-making meets careful resource management and planning, making use of your rider's strengths in decisive moves. Teamwork is essential to keep your leaders protected, to avoid pesky peloton pulling duties, to create lactate threshold crushing leadouts, making attacks impossible, and to set up your sprinter in perfect position for that final dash. Starting with just yourself as a young cyclist and a handful of cash, good performances satisfy your sponsors and lets you develop your own rider and team members as they gain experience focusing on or mixing six different specializations and five different attributes makes riders progress from eager novices to monument winning superstars with a hefty price tag or deeply flawed athletes or both with a maximum roster of six riders and nine races to pick each season it doesn't take long or require spreadsheets to get your team lined up and ready to go as such management is simple but not simplistic. The game not only is for tactically minded cycling enthusiasts, but anyone who fancies nuanced tactics where decision making is king and at least has a tolerance for management games. Knowledge about cycling tactics sure helps, but is not required to get into it. There we go, that is the trailer for The Cyclist, a new cycling game. Never thought I'd see the day, to be honest, but that day is supposed to be roughly in 2021 June, so still some time to go, but it also means they have some more time to try and finish off all the details of the game, because what you just saw was a trailer for the alpha version, a first build version that they are still working on. Now, before we go any further, I know from the trailer itself that it's a very complex trailer. It tries to put a lot of information into two minutes of content, and you need to rewatch it at least like two to three times to get the basic gists of what the game will hold. And once you get to know more of it, it starts becoming more and more intriguing because the first time I saw it, I was like, okay, it's got a seasonal management part. It's got an aspect of an in-race aspect, just like in Pro Cycling Manager with the 3D, but here it's with a 2D board game stylish thing. It had my curiosity, but I didn't know how deep it went. And I decided to contact one of the developers on the game and that is at camshaft software and you might have heard that name on this channel before because we've had two times a guest from that company that also makes pro cycling manager youtube videos his name is kilra place and we'll have him on today in this video as well to explain a bit more about what this game holds what the aspects are what it tries to do a certain way so yeah let's not waste any time kilra i heard you were making a cycling game how did that come about so yes, there has been, uh, with a few hints thrown out here and there, that um, I've been looking into potentially making a cycling game at some point in, in my uh, future, and that future is now in my past, um, as we have started working on a cycling game about two years ago, um, not quite two years ago yet, and that has been a project that has been cooking in the background for a long time outside of automation and our camshaft software as well before i even became a software developer i started thinking about how to make a cycling game and uh, well the time is now awesome news you sound extremely enthusiastic and i think a lot of people do because well we only have pretty much one option on pc when it comes to pro cycling gaming and and the fact that you're working on something that could be an add-on to that and could potentially be something new for the people to play is really cool. And I hope that I will uh, be able to test it out pretty soon as well. Before we dive into the aspects of the game, I would like to ask, uh, the title says The Cyclist Tactics. We're saying The Cyclist. Is there supposed to be a, a bit of a franchise around it or is it 
supposed to be the cyclist and the tactics is just a part that explains it because i just feel like saying the cyclist and i really enjoy it being that simple of a name because a lot of people will keep it in their mind and basically say you play the cyclist or you play tc i've already got an abbreviation ready we can call it the cyclist for now because there is certainly no other game in that franchise i deliberately kept it that way that it's like the cyclist tactics because well if the game is doing well and people love it then maybe there could be something else in within the franchise of the cyclist but uh, for now and for the any foreseeable future it is just the cyclist if you um, prefer that short name okay the cyclist now let's talk about it a bit more we saw in the trailer that you've got seasonal management going on we see that we've got an in-race aspect to it in the same way that Pro Cycling Manager has, in this conversation we're having, we're probably going to point to Pro Cycling Manager quite a few times because it's quite generally the only reference we have. But I'd like to ask, how does the feeling between the seasonal management and the in-race mechanics hold in the game? Is there a special focus on one of the two or is there a healthy balance between both? About three-quarter racing, one-quarter management, if that, maybe even a little less. Uh, on the management side and I deliberately made it that way because the um, management side is supposed to feel light while still having all the right aspects of cycling management so it is a much scoped down version of um, a pro cycling manager without losing the focus on what is important in cycling and cycling management so yeah, I, I would say about um, a quarter to three quarters, where the three quarters, the major part is the racing itself. Now, I said it before, we spoke that Pro Cycling Manager is the only reference we have. What do you see as the main difference between the Cyclist and Pro Cycling Manager really in regarding to the in-race gameplay? The tactical gameplay is entirely different from Pro Cycling Manager. And the management part indeed will, if, if you have played Pro Cycling Manager or, or, or thought about similar games, um, then you will be able to handle the management part quite well from the start. But uh, indeed, the tactical aspect of it would have to be explained um, explained with tutorials, which is the case. There are tutorials available. Putting Pro Cycling Manager aside for a bit, I'd like to dive deeper into both sides of that aspect, both the seasonal management and the in-race mechanics. But in regards to that management, how does the season go? How is it set up? How can you set up for your race how do you plan your races that kind of stuff you can see 27 races per season and you can mm -hmm. select nine out of those um but there are different races for amateur and pro so there are more races going on at the same time but you see 27 races which are randomly generated or rather procedurally generated they are not entirely random but uh, they follow archetypes and so on yep. and yes so you have only nine races to race per season Yes, you, the Liege, uh, Liege, Bastogne Liege is super important, but is that 1.1 race really that important that you, that you need to, to race it? Well, to an amateur team, it really is, right? But, um, would you describe that as, um, being worth spending, let's say, half an hour on of your time? M maybe, for some. For others, certainly not. So, yeah, that is where the cyclist tries to emphasize the important, more important bits. And every one of these nine races will matter because, well, if you have so many, so fewer races per season where you can grab sponsor attention, well, you ha really have to work hard to, to do that. Or to, um, uh, for instance, take a, a lower level rider and try to push him so that he gains the experience he needs to level up and become a more valuable addition for later in the season for the team. Well, that actually perfectly brings me to my next topic, the progress in the game. So you have this season, you have this rider from which you start a team. How does the progress in the game feel? Is there something like an end game in it for the conversations that we previously had? I had the feeling that it's similar to a game like Europa Universalis. If people have played that, it is a strategy game where you need to conquer the world, but you define your goal in the whole campaign mode. And I think it's very similar here where... You have that, but you also have these underlying achievements like winning certain races. Is that correct or am I guessing the wrong way? You could say that the uh, the main focus of the game is the career mode, where you start out with your, your shit little rider with a lot of potential and he's building a little team of nooblets around him. 
And um, <laughs> they are supposed to get from the bottom rung of the amateur league um, to kind of the top of the, uh, the, um, the pro league. And it is considered that you have won the game once you um, get a jersey, once you take a jersey, once you win a jersey in the equivalent um, to the um, Tour de France, which is in the game the Tour of Gasmere. It is playing out in a fictional universe, which probably also should be noted, uh, that is shared with automation. It's the uh, light campaign uh, map. Our continent, it's a continent with five countries, and they are getting quite fleshed out. So, yes, it is, um, you are considered to have won then, but that is just an achievement. You can continue on playing, and it will continue to be hard. It's not like you have cracked the puzzle by then, uh, but rather, well, you probably, with all your great riders that you have accumulated there, your bills are becoming too large for even the greatest of sponsors. And you will have to let them go, at least part of them. And so okay. it's a revolving door, and you can't keep all the superstars. That's impossible. So every season, even if you have been there, you, you will probably struggle to keep it up there. Like You might be able to do a push to get to the top, um, but then the next season will probably be tough again. So yeah, it's certainly uh, the case that um, there is no super clear defined goal and it is in the end game where you are at the top it will be tough to retain that spot okay yeah that sounds pretty straightforward regarding the seasonal management now you say that the focus lies on the in-race mechanics being different than pro cycling manager and just in general a new concept and it feels like a digital board game looking at it but there's so much hiding under it that it feels like that i'd like to ask you to simply explain to me what is the in-race part of this game? A stage has a certain length. This length is split up in nodes. Nodes are those little fields that you see, those little circles where you can move to, where you can move riders to. If more than one rider is on a node, they are considered to ride together as a stack, a stack of riders, where within the stack, positioning is actually important for slipstream calculations and stuff. But all of that is transparent and you, you see how much slipstream you're getting and so on. So, okay, so we have our nodes start to finish. And now there are three different types of terrain. Flat, mountain, which is uphill only, and the downhill. And um, riders react to those differently, uh, depending on their traits and skills and so on. And then each rider has two different resources. That is energy and attack. Now, these, each one of these nodes has a value assigned to it, which is the free movement value that you get when you start from that node the next turn. So if you move to a node that says 10 on it, then you will get 10 free movement the next turn. If you want to move further than these 10 points, these 10 nodes, then you can invest energy. If you invest up to your maximum allowance of energy per turn, which also depends on your rider setup, this is one of those stats a rider has, if you invest all your energy, uh, then you can start investing attack points beyond that to ride even faster. So what is, um, what is then happening is that if you want to use attack points, they, they are more limited and more precious than just energy points. If you use attack points, then you can surprise other riders. And that is something that lets you get away. And um, yeah, I think so. That is, that is kind of the, the super short summary of how the in-race mechanics work. Okay, yeah, that sounds way more tactical than I initially thought it would be. But I should have known that because the title literally says tactics. But that intrigues me because I like the tactic side of things in Pro Cycling Manager. We kind of lag that in the sense that in Pro Cycling Manager, it feels like once you get it under control, once you realize how to play side in times of stage and so forth, you know the basic gist of it and you can win pretty much over 50% of what you ride and that should not always be the case. And I feel like here there's way more the mental ability of thinking what steps could play out and thinking the future steps as well. So for example... In three turns, how could I best react if someone does this? Stuff like that. And yeah, it's genuinely intriguing me. And I 
I really can't wait to play this and test it out a bit. But before we get to that, let's say, for example, I am going to start writing a flat stage. How would I get into that and what would likely be the steps that I'll be taking in the stage itself? Um, pretty much like in, uh, in real life, what you would want to do is to take one of your um, somewhat weaker team members. You only have four, remember? So they are all pretty decent and should be helpful and limited resources. It's not one of eight. It's one out of four. So it's more important, right? Um, you take one of your riders and send him out at the start of the stage to, um, to go along with a breakaway so that you have an excuse to not be pulling the peloton. Um, because it is mostly on those teams that do not have uh, a rider in the peloton to do the pulling duties until... The, um, any kind of leaders are coming in to say like, oh, Bob, Bob, the time gap is getting a little out of hand here, guys. <laughs> um, so that is working as you would expect uh, from real life. And then the Peloton will let them be on a leash, which depends on um, how strong it considers those escapees to be or how valuable they are in the general standings and all. So that's kind of an analysis is running. So they are riding along and the gap is um, leveling out at some point and then they start to bring them back, just like in, in real life. While that is going on, you want to protect your uh, main riders, your lead riders, in a good spot hidden away in the peloton so that they get the maximum amount of slipstream bonus. If you're riding at the front of the peloton, you still have pretty good slipstream bonus, better than being in a group of five or something. but um, not as good as being in the middle or at the end of the of the peloton. The problem is that when something that you need to watch while you're progressing through the stage and getting closer to those escapees is that while you are in the bulk of the peloton, you cannot get away from the peloton. You are kind of stuck in there. So it will take at least a turn to get to the front of the peloton where you can then make your moves or follow attacks. So if someone else decides to go away while you're leisurely cycling along there um, in the slipstream, then, yeah, they, they have an upper hand on you or the initiative on you. Um, so when you're getting closer, let's say the escapees have been caught, then one, one thing that you would be doing if you have a sprinter in there that is highly capable and a reasonable lead outrider that still has enough energy after bringing back those um, oh, energy and attack, that's more important, at my, uh, at enough attack points left over after chasing down those escapees, then you would want to set out a, set up a lead out for your sprinter um, because and there's one important mechanic in there in the cyclist that makes things more realistic and that is the um, so-called momentum mechanic. If you um, initiate a new new group or move from the front of the group, uh, with attack points, using attack points, you are starting to block nodes in front of you for any rider that is coming from your same group. So if you lead out with four attack points, you're going to block two nodes in front of you, which means that um, a rider that is trying to move even faster has to move significantly faster to get away from you. So that way, lead outs work in the game, and you have to uh, you send out a lead out rider, you hammer it really hard, and that makes sure that no one can get away at that point. Of course, they can attack earlier and so on, but uh, well, that that is probably too far out, right? Then you need to get your sprinter into position, and you do so by moving through through the stack um, in the stack reordering phase, which is after a move phase. Problem is that takes energy too. And if you've already used all your energy that turn, because the leadout was brutal, then you need to start using attack points to even reorder within the stack and get into position. So then it is a fight between the teams who can get into the best position. And then once you are moving across the line and the actual sprint is going on, that positioning is vitally important because um, when let's say, 10 riders cross the line and they all land on the same node, well, who has won then? Well, that is dependent on the stack position. 
And when you cross the line, there's a sprint mechanic attached to it. It's similar to the uh, stack reordering mechanic, where you can spend attack points to change your position in the stack, so to move up in the bulk of sprinters. And um, that requires really careful thought and set up with your teammates so that you get into the right position, that you even block riders or s you can even get false trains going <laughs> by setting up a rider, the kind of a second lead out rider that is pulling a sprint. And then your sprinter just passes him by while some of your, your other rider, uh, some of your competitors have followed your guy's wheel. So they are left behind them entirely. So there's a lot of like real life things going on there, which are all condensed into those mechanics. And they, they do work. I've seen them work already. Um, most of the game mechanics are at this point already implemented. Okay, that's quite great. Because when first seeing the trailer and when first seeing the digital board in the in-race aspect, it's hard to figure out whether you're playing through an actual stage fully. So I want to be clear that it's actually like in real life where you have a race that you start off with and you play through the race and you have to put in certain tactics throughout the race to achieve victory. So it's basically that, but in a digital board game version, but with underlying tactics that go way deeper than one would expect. Like you said, the drafting, for example, the lead out, the teamwork, for example, the fact that you could probably send someone up there in the breakaway to have a climber bridge up and then be an aspect in that breakaway while the other competitors are trying to launch counterattacks and stuff behind. Well, it's really intriguing, genuinely. Now, last thing, because we spoke quite a lot about the gameplay already, we dove into seasonal management, we dove into the in-race mechanic, but I've got some side questions regarding to, first of all, the internationality of the game, because cycling is a worldwide sport. Everybody in the world is basically a cycling fan deep inside their hearts. They just don't know it yet. And as a consequence, you've got, for example, Colombia with a huge fan base for the likes of Bernal, Uran, and so forth. And in regards to that, I would like to ask, well, is there anything planned regarding translations to have like Spanish in there or Italian? Because not all of the people unfortunately speak English. So yeah, that's an aspect of the game one has to consider. And I wanted to ask whether you guys were prepared for having an international launch of the game so that everybody in the world can try and enjoy this game. Yes, uh, and the translations are, the bulk of translations is already done. Um, so even now in the in its very early state, you can you would be able to test it in um, different translations if we made it available, right? Um, so <laughs> just to tease even more. Um, <laughs> so what languages do we have? Um, English, of course, is the, the primary language that we have developed it in. Then we also have German, French, uh, Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese. So they, those are the, the languages we are going for. Um, I've done a, <laughs> it's so so interesting actually. I've done a little bit of an analysis on and compared our data to um, to automation because you look at a, a country like it, Italy and you would say like oh yeah that, those are really there there are lots of car enthusiasts there right um, so you would think so yes okay cool um, why are so few people buying the game there oh well we don't have the game in Italian. And so what we see as buyers is only the English speaking part. And then you go and look up how many people in Italy um, are comfortable reading and speaking English. And then you see it's like 15% uh, or something. It's the number I just pull out of my behind right now. Um, but it was reasonably low. And then you say like, oh, maybe a translation if we have that many sales in Italy. Maybe translation is actually worth doing there. <laughs> and with cycling, I've done the um, that analysis and seen where, considering a certain amount of potential copies sold, uh, where it is reasonable. And that is why we are certainly not going to do a Norwegian translation because you Norwegian guys are really damn good at English. <laughs> Unfortunately, no translation for you, but you will be you will be able to understand the game regardless. <laughs> That's basically rejecting them for being too good at a language. <laughs> anyway, we've got another topic that is pretty near to my heart because, well, for Pro Cycling Manager, I've been working on the World DB for a few years. I ended up stopping that at the end of last year because of just not having enough time and not being able to combine that with making videos, which I 
like doing much more, to be honest. And as a consequence, my question for you is, PCM is a game that is very reliant on the community for a lot of the content regarding real names, real stats, and so forth. Is modding going to be possible? Because everybody will most likely try and, well, can I can I get a real raise into this? Can I get a real name into this? Can I re- get a real writer kind of simulated into this and be able to play with the likes of uh, an Egan Bernal, for example? Is that possible? Is modding something you guys focused on? I know the answer is yes, because, well, you've got automation as a game of your company already and there's so much in that modding community it's utterly insane and you guys support the modding so so much so hence my question um modding as such will be possible and we have uh, deliberately from the very start laid everything out so that it is possible to do so uh currently it's a little scary because basically the entire game would be moddable (laughs) and we are not quite sure if we want to be quite that open (laughs) so um basically all dependencies for like anything that has any kind of stat attached to it would be moddable uh in principle and we have to be a little careful about how many of these things we're going to expose but um for instance uh, you mentioned the stage building custom stage building that is something that we have of course thought about and uh, just recently implemented in order to make tutorials work. Because in a tutorial, you can't just throw them into a, a randomly or procedurally generated stage and say, like, yeah, yeah, yeah it will work. It's like, no, <laughs> pr- probably not a good idea, right? It needs to be a little bit more controlled. So in the tutorials, we're actually uh, building those stages that the tutorials are being raced on um, with just a string. A string means text. It's just pure text. So, for instance, you would be uh, looking at a uh, a section of terrain. Let's say it's a flat section of terrain, and it has a gradient of plus one percent. And it is not a technical section. It is not a cobble section. So, with that knowledge, and it's not a special card, like not a finish or intermediate sprint or anything. And with that knowledge, you have like what was it, seven characters or eight characters? Um, that are all logically just mapped out and you put that in and you have that section now in the game. And you repeat that for every section you want to replicate and you can choose whatever gradient you want. You can choose if that is a difficult ride section, if there are cobbles and how severe the cobbles are and everything just by putting in a little bit of text. So that is entirely possible and we are going to support um, that kind of modding. But also... Probably more interesting to many people will be um, like real names and stuff. Uh, and that will be a database that is exposed at the probably already at launch uh, so that people can tinker with that. There will be a certain database with um, starting riders that you, um, you, can, you can set. Not manually in the game, but the, the game picks from those starting riders and po- sorts them into teams. And you would be able to change teams and their riders um, freely uh, if you wanted to, if you wanted to do modding. And all that is very simple. It's not a uh, an encoded database or anything. It's basically text editing. So very simple and it should be highly moddable. I guess as a bit of an expansion question on that, for example, the graphics in the game, you've got that shirt on the left top once you're making your team or your rider and you've got, for example, the countries as well. Is that a moddable part of the game? Is that something you can change towards what you desire and perhaps be able to have real countries and also the real shots of teams for example perhaps in a more pixelated fashion but in the game i think they can be made moddable uh we have not talked about that yet so i can't promise anything um uh, certainly i would doubt it is moddable right at the start but we do want to make these things moddable as well. And there is, for instance, also for um, even the looks of the game in the stages, they are completely the the, the race view of the, the stage. That is completely dynamically generated as well, of course. And um, placing props and so on uh, is done via certain mechanics that also are built such that they are moddable. And we also have a little tool for potential models and right now for me so that i can put that in um 
where you can make custom ones and just check them through and see if they generate correctly and such. So uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of potential in there. And flags and jerseys certainly would be something that is that makes perfect sense to expose to uh, modders. Okay, that's good to know. Genuinely good to know. And I think that's where we should probably somewhat end it off here because we don't want to give away too much to the people, of course. And to me either, because I... I love the tease of it, and I love to know more about it as the development goes along. So firstly, I'd like to thank you for being here, for taking your time to be on the channel here and explaining what the game is like and what it's going to be like when the game is released and what your concept behind it is. And additionally, I'd also like to have you point out where can people follow this game and where can they follow the development of the game and so forth so that I don't have to make an update video every month, for example. When this video goes up, we should have our Steam page. Um, I would, if you are interested, uh, in if this sounds intriguing, then I would um, like you to show that interest by uh, just wishlisting the game and follow it along that way. Then you will get notified when something happens. Um, you can take a look at the video that has been posted on my channel, Kiro Plays, uh, where I um, get into more detail about the, the base mechanics uh, in this first video, and also there will be general content about the game there, of course. Um, and yeah, that's probably um, the the two things that uh, the two places you can you can really uh, find out more about the game. So uh, should be it. Awesome! I'd like to thank you once again for being on here. I'd like to thank you for giving us a story and the news about your new game. And additionally, I'd like to ask everybody that is watching and has some interest in a new cycling game. Definitely check out their Steam page. I am very curious to see how I uh, will experience the game. It looks like something that I will enjoy because I really like the tactics aspect of cycling and being able to play that in a bit of a different style of a game than Pro Cycling Manager is really something I'm looking forward to. But next to that, the people that are watching, check out Killrop's channel. He does Pro Cycling Manager as well if you love that game. And he'll probably be talking about his own game pretty soon as well, quite a bit. So once again, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you like to tap that like button. If you didn't tell what's wrong, I'll try and make it better for you next time. But that's it. The announcement. The cyclist. I can't wait.